Hello, in this lecture we will find the area of a circle. In the drawing we have a circle and inside the, the circle we have a shape. We know that uh, angle ADC equals to 90 degrees. and also angle BCD equals to 90 degrees and uh, we also know that uh, side AD of this shape equals to 4 units and uh, side uh, DC equals to 6 units and uh, Side BC of this shape equals to 8 units and uh, we want to find out the area of this circle. Okay. First of all, I will explain uh, the term of uh, one-sided angles. What are one-sided angles? Okay, actually if you have two lines line A and line B and uh, line C intersects those two lines line C intersects line A at this point while line C intersects line B at this point uh, angles alpha and uh, beta are defined as uh, one-sided internal angles I will write it down angles alpha and beta are defined as one-sided Interior angles. Why are angles alpha and beta defined as one sided angles? The answer to this question is very simple because of the fact that uh, both those two angles alpha and beta are located at the same side at the same side of line C. Ok, 
Okay, both of those two angles, alpha and beta, are located at the left side of line C. Oh, they are located at the same side of line C. They are located at the left side of line C. The red line C. For that reason, they are defined uh, as one-sided angles. And why are angles alpha and beta are defined as interior angles? The answer to that question is very simple because of the fact that angles alpha and beta are inside the structure of lines A, C and B. They are inside this structure of lines A, C and B. They are defined as interior angles. So, actually, those are one-sided interior angles. And we have also the other type of one-sided angles. We have one-sided exterior angles. If we have two lines, line A, this is line A, and, uh, and line B, This is line B. And line C intersects those two lines. The red Line C intersects those two lines. Line C intersects line A at this point, and line C intersects line B at this point. Then angles alpha and beta are defined as one-sided external angles. Again, angles alpha and beta are defined as one-sided external angles. I'll write it down. Angles alpha and beta are defined as one-sided external angles. Okay, angles alpha and beta are defined as one-sided exterior angles. And again, why are angles alpha and beta are one-sided angles? The answer to this question is very simple, that because of the fact that angles alpha and beta are located at the same, at, at the same sides, or at the same side, of line C, they are defined as one-sided angles. Actually, angles alpha and beta, both those angles, are located at the left side of line C. For that reason, they are defined as one-sided angles and uh, they are defined as external angles because of the fact that angles alpha and beta are located 
outside of this structural lines A, C, B. They are located outside of this structure of lines A, C, B. For that reason, they are defined as exterior angles. Okay. And actually, we have the rule rule number one about one sided angles. Rule number one states that. If the sum of the two one-sided angles can be interior angles or exterior angles. Okay, interior or exterior. So if the sum of one-sided angles equals to 180 degrees, then angle alpha equals to angle beta. Okay, I will read rule number one again. Rule number one states that if the sum of the two one-sided angles, and it doesn't matter if they are interior or exterior, it applies to both of uh, those two types of angles, if the sum of the two one-sided angles equals to 180 degrees, then then line A is parallel to line B. Okay. I will read rule number one again. Rule number one states that if the sum of the two one-sided angles equals to 180 degrees, then line A is parallel to line B. Okay, so actually here if alpha plus beta equals to 180 degrees, if the sum of those two one sided internal angles equals to 180 degrees.
then 9a is parallel to line b. Okay, so if the sum of those two angles equals to 180 degrees, then line A is parallel to line B. And it's also true for one-sided interior angles. If the sum of those two angles equals to 180 degrees, if alpha plus beta equals to 180 degrees, then line A is parallel to line B. Okay, so it applies to to those uh, both uh, those two types of angles, they can be interior angles. If the sum of those two angles equals to 180 degrees, then line A is parallel to line B, and it also applies to exterior angles. If the sum of the two one-sided external angles equals to 180 degrees, this if alpha plus beta equals to 180 degrees, then line A is parallel to line B. Okay? So we actually can implement rule number one in our circle because actually we have In our circle, two angles, angle ADC, that equals to 90 degrees, and angle PCD, that also equals to 90 degrees actually those two angles are one-sided angles because of the fact that they are located both on the right side of line segment DC they both located on the right side of line segment DC for that reason, they are defined as one-sided and they are internal angles because they are inside the structure of this structure of line segments. So they are one-sided interior angles. I want it down. So those two angles are one-sided interior angles and the sum of those two angles are 90 degrees plus 90 degrees equals to 180 degrees. Therefore, according to rule number one, Line segment AD is parallel to line segment PC. So, I read 
דגל זה פונקציה תיירות line segment ADC equals to 90 degrees this angle equals to 90 degrees and line segment VCD also equals to 90 degrees this angle equals to 90 degrees so the sum of those two angles equals to 180 degrees and they are actually one sided interior angles because actually you can view uh, at AD you can see AD as line A you can see BC as line B and you can see DC as line C so for that reason those two angles are one sided angles actually you can see DC is line C that intersects those two line segments AD and BC so those two angles are one sided interior angles and the sum of those two angles equals to 180 degrees therefore according to rule number one line segment, line segment AD is parallel to line segment BC Okay, line segment AD is parallel to line segment BC. Okay. And the next step will connect together points D and B by a straight line. So connect together points A and C by a straight line. And uh, we will call to the, intersec to the intersection point between line segment AC and line segment DB point O. Point O is the intersection point between line segment DB and line segment AC. And uh, in the next step, I will explain you what are vertex angles. Okay, what are vertex angles? Actually, if two lines are intersecting each other, for example, line A, this is line A that intersects with line B this is line B, so those two lines A and B intersecting each other and the intersection point at this point, is at this point so at the intersection point they create four angles this angle is angle number one and uh, this angle is angle number two and uh, This angle is angle number three. And 
this angle is angle number four. Okay, whenever two lines are inter intersecting each other, they create four angles. One, two, three, and four. And uh, actually, they create two pairs of uh, vertex angles. Angles one and three are defined as vertex angles and also angles two and four are defined as vertex angles. So they create two pairs of vertex angles. Whenever two lines are intersecting each other, they create two pairs of vertex angles. So I write it down. Angles one and three are vertex angles. I'll define this vertex uh, vertex angles. And the second pair of vertex angles are angles 2 and 4. Angles 2 and 4 are also vertex angles. Okay, I read again the things that I wrote. Angles 1 and 3 are vertex angles. Those two angles are vertex angles. And angles 2 and 4 are also vertex angles. Angles 2 and 4 are also vertex angles. Okay, and uh, we actually have a rule, rule number two. Rule number two states that uh, vertex angles are equal to each other. Okay, according to rule number two, rule number two states that vertex angles are equal to each other. So I read rule number two again. Rule number two states that vertex angles are equal to each other. So actually, if we, we have two lines, line A. This is line A that intersects with line B. This is line B. Those two lines, line A and line B, are intersecting each other and the intersection point is T1. 
this is the intersection point between line A and line B. They create two pairs of vertex, uh, of vertex angles. Here, alpha and the beta are the first pair of vertex angles and according to number two, they are equal to each other. Okay, alpha and beta are vertex angles and the folding tool number two angle alpha equals to angle beta. And the second pair of vertex angles This is line A and this is line B. Then at the intersection point we have four angles and two pair two pairs of vertex angles. The second pair of vertex angles are those two angles so alpha and beta vertex angles and the problem to rule number two they are equal to each other that is to say alpha equals to beta according to rule number two Okay, so those angles are vertex angles and according to rule number two they are equal to each other and those angles are the second pair of vertex angles and according to rule number two they are equal to each other that is to say alpha equals to beta. Okay, so Actually, uh, in our drawing, uh, this angle, angle AOD, And angle B or C those two angles are defined as vertex angles and they go into all number two they are equal to each other. Okay, angle AOD and, and angle AOC are vertex angles and according to rule number two they are equal to each other. So those two angles are defined as vertex angles and according to rule number two they are equal to each other. Okay. In the next step I will explain you what are alternating angles? Okay, I will explain you the term alternating angles. Actually, if we have two lines, line A.
this is line A and line B this is line B and we have line C that intersects those two lines Line C intersects those two lines. The intersection point between line C and line A is at this point, and the intersection point between line C and line B is at this point. Actually, angles alpha and beta. I'll define this alternating interior angles. Okay. Those are alternating angles. Those two angles, alpha and beta, are defined as alternating angles. Actually, interior alternating angles. I will add that they are inter interior alternating angles. Those two angles, alpha and beta, define this interior alternating angles and what is the reason that they are defined as alternating angles actually the answer to that question is very simple the reason that angles alpha and beta are defined as alternating angles is because of the fact that they are located at different sides of line C. Okay, angles alpha and beta are located at different sides of line C. While angle alpha is located on, to the left side of line C, the red line line C, angle beta is located to the right side of line C. For that reason, they are defined as alternating angles. And they are also defined as interior angles. The reason that angles alpha and beta are defined as interior angles is because of the fact that they are located inside the structure of lines A, C, and B. They are inside the, the, of this structure, lines A, C, and B. For that reason, they are defined as interior angles. Okay, so uh, this is the first type of in, uh, alternating angles. And we also have the second type of alternating angles. Actually, we have the ex exterior alternating angles. Okay. If we have line A this is line A and line B This is line B and line C that intersects those two lines.
line C intersects those two lines, line A and line B. Actually, angles alpha and beta are defined as exterior alternating angles. Okay, so I will write it down. Angles alpha and beta are defined as exterior alternating angles. Okay, angles alpha and beta are defined as external alternating angles. And the reason that they are defined as exterior angles is because of the fact that they are located outside the structure of lines A, C and B. They are located outside of this structure of lines, for that reason they are defined exterior angles. And the reason that angles alpha and beta are defined as alternating angles is because of the fact that those two angles alpha and beta are located at different sides of line C. Angles alpha and beta are located at different sides of line C, while angle alpha is located to the left of line C. Angle alpha is located to the left side of the red line line C. Angle beta is located to the left side angle beta is located to the right side of line C and angle alpha is located to the left side of line C so those two angles alpha and beta are located at different sides of line C for that reason they are defined alternating angles okay because of the fact that those two angles alpha and beta are located at different sides of line C they are defined as alternating angles and because of the fact that angles alpha and beta are located outside of this structure of lines they are defined as exterior angles and we actually have a rule for uh, alternating angles rule number three Rule number three states that alternating angles and it doesn't matter at all if they are interior alternating angles or external alternating angles it, is, it applies to both types of angles it, it can be interior or exterior alternating angles
between parallel lines are equal to each other. So I will read rule number three again. Rule number three states that alternating angles and they can be interior or exterior angles. Alternating angles between parallel lines are equal to each other. So actually If we have uh, if we know that line A is parallel to line B if line A is parallel to line B then According to rule number three, alpha equals to beta. Okay, if line A is parallel to line B, then according to rule number three, angle alpha equals to angle beta. Okay. So if we have two alternative angles between parallel lines, we can deduce according to rule number three that they are equal to each other. In this picture, if we know that line A is parallel to line B, then we can deduce from rule number three that angle alpha equals to angle beta. And it is also true for exterior alternative angles. If we know that line A is parallel to line B, line A is parallel to line B, then according to rule number three, angle alpha equals to angle beta. to one number, number five. Okay. So, it applies also to interior alternative angles. If line A is parallel to line B, then angle alpha equals to angle beta. Okay, so, we actually can implement rule number three in our circle. Uh, first of all, we'll focus on two triangles in triangle BOC and triangle AOC. Okay, we'll focus on triangle BOC, the green triangle BOC. And 
in triangle AOT. The green small triangle AOD. On those two green triangles, angle AOD equals to angle BOC. Those two angles are equal to each other because they are vertex angles and according to rule number two, vertex angles are equal to each other, so they are equal to each other according to rule number two. So I write it down. Angle AOD, this angle, equals to angle BOC. Both two, two angles are equal to each other because they are vertex angles and according to rule number two, vertex angles are equal to each other. Find this vertex angles and according to rule number two, vertex angles are equal to each other, so they are equal to each other. Okay, and also angle DAO, this angle that I marked in the red line equals to angle BCO to this angle. Those two angles are equal to each other. Why? Because of the fact that they are alternating angles, they are actually located at different sides of line segment AC, they are actually alternating in their own angles and they are located between parallel lines. Line segment AD is parallel to line segment BC. Therefore, according to all number three, they are equal to each other. So I write it down. Angle DAO equals to angle BCO to this angle because actually they are alternating angles. Why are they alternating angles? Because they are located at different sides of line segment AC. They are located at different sides of line segment AC. For that reason they are they are alternating angles and they are also located between parallel line segments. Line segment AD is parallel to line segment BC. So they are actually alternating angles that are located between parallel line segments for the three and according to rule number three they are equal to each other. Okay, we write it down. Angle DAO equals to angle BCO, those two angles are equal to each other because they are alternating angles. Located, those two angles are located between parallel line segments. Line segment AD is parallel to line segment BC. For that reason, according to rule 
number three that states that alternating n per n, alternating angles between parallel line or parallel line segments are equal to each other. Alternating angles between parallel lines or parallel line segments are equal to each other. So those two out alternating angles are located between parallel line segments and therefore they are equal to each other according to rule number three. Okay? And also we have angle ADO this angle is equal to angle CBO to this angle those two angles are equal to each other because of the fact that they are alternating angles why are, why are they alternating angles? because they are located at different sides of line segment DB those two angles are located at different sides of line segment DB and they are actually also located between parallel lines. Line segment AD is parallel to line segment BC. So those two angles are, are alternating angles that are located between parallel lines and according to rule number three they are equal to each other. So I write it down angle ADO equals to angle CBO because of the fact that those two angles are alternating angles they are located at different sides of line segment EB Alternating angles and they are also located between parallel line segments. Line segment AD is parallel to line segment BC according to all number one. So because of the fact that they are alternating angles that are located between parallel line segments they are equal to each other according to rule number three okay so actually angle AOD equals to angle BOC those two angles are equal to each other because they are vertex angles and according to rule number two vertex angles are equal to each other and angle BAO equals to angle BOC this, uh, those two angles are equal to each other because of the fact that they are alternating angles that are located between parallel line segments and therefore they are equal to each other and also angle ADO equals to angle CBO those two angles are equal to each other because of the fact that they are alternating angles and they are located between parallel line segments line segment AD is parallel to line segment BC therefore they are equal to each other so we actually proved the three angles of this triangle are equal to three angles of this triangle, therefore we proved this, that those two green triangles are, are similar to each other. Okay. Uh, I'll write it down. According to angle, 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 into A, 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 A is the for angle. 
triangle B or C, the big green triangle. is similar to triangle AOD, the small green triangle. Because we prove that three angles of this green green triangle are equal to three angles of this small green triangle. Okay? And uh, according to Angle, 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 triangle POC is similar to triangle AOB. Those two triangles are similar to each other. And uh, whenever you have two similar triangles, if you know that two triangles are similar to each other, then you have a special relationship between their sides. Okay, so, for example, if we have two triangles that are similar to each other, ABC is similar to triangle DEF if those two triangles are similar to each other then the following relationship exists between the sides of those two similar triangles. AB over DE equals to AC over DF equals to BC over EF. Again, AB over DE equals to AC over DF equals to BC over EF. I write it down. AB over AB over DE or ED equals to AC over DF. equals to BC over EF. Okay, if those two triangles are similar to each other, then AB over DE equals to AC over DF equals to BC over EF. Okay, it is true for every two similar triangles. If two triangles are similar to each other, then this equality between the sides of those two similar triangles are true. It's true. Okay, so actually we uh, can implement this rule in our two similar green triangles, we can say that uh, OB over OD equals to OC over OA equals to BC over AD.
okay, because of the fact that those two great triangles are similar to each other, then the following relationship exists between the sides of those two similar triangles. O, B over O, D, O, B over O, D equals to O, C over O, A equals to B, C over A, D. Okay, so we know that B, C equals to 8 units and A, D equals to 4 units. So we can write here that B, C equals to 8 units and AD equals to 4 units and 8 over 4 is 2 ok so actually from this equality we can derive two equalities the first equality is that OB over OD equals to 2 ok OB over OD equals to 2 and uh, we can multiply this equality by OD and we will get that OB equals to 2 times OD OB equals 2 times OD. So if, for example, OD is, will be defined as A, that is to say OD equals to A, then OB equals 2 times OD. OB equals 2 times OD. So if OD equals to A, then OB equals to, to 2 times A because of the fact that OB is twice as large as OD so if OD equals to A then OB equals 2 times A and we can also derive from this equality second uh, small equality that OC over OA also equals to 2. Okay? OC over OA equals to 2. OC over OA equals to 2. So if OC over OA equals to 2, then we can multiply this equality by OA and we get that OC equals to 2 times OA. OC equals 2 times OA. Okay? OC equals 2 times OA. So, if we define OA as B, that is to say OA equals to B, then according to our equality, OC equals 2 times OA. OC equals 2 times OA and OA equals 2B, so OC equals 2 times B. Okay? So, now we know the relationship between the line segments and we find the values of A and B. Uh, actually, we know that uh, angle ADC equals to 90 degrees. It is given us in the question. Angle ADC equals to 90 degrees.
So if angle ADC equals to 90 degrees, then triangle ADC is the right triangle. Okay. And uh, according to the Pythagorean theorem, in any right triangle, we have uh, a theorem that states that the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. Okay, so in the right triangle ADC, the square of the hypotenuse is AC square. And the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars equals to AD square plus DC square. Okay, so according to the Pythagorean theorem, in the right triangle ADC, the square of the hypotenuse, that is to say AC square, equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars equals to AD square plus DC square. Okay. And uh, what is the size of AC, line segment AC? Line segment AC equals to AO plus OC. AO plus OC equals to AC but AO equals to B and OC equals to 2B. So actually AC equals to B plus 2B. So AC equals to 3B. And AC square will be equal to 3B square. And AD square is actually AD equals to 4 units. And uh, and this square is 4 square. 4 square is 16. Okay. And plus this is square. This is equals to 6 units. So this is square is 6 square. 6 square is 36. So in total we got that uh, 3b square equals to 16 plus 36 and uh, 16 plus 36 is 52 I will write it down so we got that 3b square equals to 52 okay now we will take a root out of this equality we get that 3b equals to the root of 52 okay 3b equals to the root of 52 Okay, but 52 equals to 13 times 4, so I write it uh, 52 equals to 13 times 4, and uh, we also know that the root of A times B equals to the root of A times root of B. So we can split the root to two roots, and we can write that 3B equals to the root of 4 times root 13 okay but the root of 4 is 2 so I write it down 3b equals to 2 times root 13 now I will divide this equality by 3 in order to get the value of B. So actually B will be equal to 
2 over 3 times root 13 units Two B is four over three times root thirteen. So we divided this equality by three, and we got that P equals to two over three times root thirteen. And if B equals to two over three times root thirteen, then two times B will be equal to four over three times root thirteen. Okay, so we found out that the value of B is 2 over 3 times root 13, while the value of 2 times B is actually 4 over 3 times root 13. Okay. Now we we'll repeat on the same process in order to find out the value of A. Angle BCD equals to 90 degrees. It is right, uh, a right angle. It is given us in the question that angle BCD equals to 90 degrees. Angle BCD is a right angle, it equals to 90 degrees, according to what is given us in the question. So, if angle BCD is a right angle, then triangle BCD is a right angle. Triangle BCD is a right angle, and therefore, we can implement the Pythagorean theorem in the right triangle BCD. According to the Pythagorean theorem, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendicular. So in this D, uh, in this right triangle, the square of the hypotenuse is DB square. And it equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars, equals to VC square plus DC square. Okay, so according to the Pythagorean theorem, in the right triangle BCD, the square of the hypotenuse is DB square equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars equals to BC square plus DC square. Okay, but what is the value of DB? DB, this line segment, uh, equals to OD plus OB. Okay, OD plus OB equals to DB. But OD equals to A and OB equals to 2A. So in total, A plus 2A equals to DB. A plus 2A is 3A. So DB equals to 3A. And DB squared equals to 3A squared. And BC equals to 8 units. And so BC squared is 8 square, 8 square is 64, and the DC square, DC equals to 6 units, so 6 square is 36. So in total we got that uh, 3A square equals to 64 plus 36. 64 plus 36 is 100, so I'll write it down, 3a square equals to 100. Here we can take a root out of this equality, and uh, the root of 100 is 10, so we'll get here that 3a 
equals to 10. Okay, if we a equals to 10, here we will divide this equality by 3 in order to get the value of a. So actually a will be equal to 10 over 3 units. If a equals to 10 over 3 units, then 2 times a equals to 20 over 3 units. I will add the units. And uh, a equals to 10 over 3 units. So a equals to 10 over 3 units and 2 times a is 20 over 3 units. So we can write here that a equals to 10 over 3 units while 2 times a equals to 20 over 3 units. Okay, so actually we have all the values of all the band segments inside this circle. In the next step, I will copy this drawing here without a and b because we have already found out the values of a and b. AO equals to 2 over 3 times root 13. While OC equals to 4 over 3 times root 13. And OD equals to 10 over 3 units and OB equals to 20 over 3 units. Okay, in the next step we will extend line segment AC until it touches the circle at point P. So actually P is the point of contact between the circle and code AP. Again, P is the point of contact between the circle and code AP. And uh, in order to find out the value of CP, the new line segments, we will use a new rule, rule number 4. Uh, According to all number four, if two lines are intersecting each other, if for example we have if two if two chords are intersecting each other, we have called A, B, that uh, intersects with code C, D, so code A, B intersects with code C, D, and the point of intersection will be defined as point O. So if it is the reality, then the following equality is true. 
that a o times o b equals to o c times o d again a o times o b equals to o c times o d so i write it down a o times o b equals to o c times o d okay so i write down rule number four okay so rule number four states that if two codes that is to say code a b and code c d if two codes in our example the codes are a b and c d are intersecting each other at point O Again, point O is the point of intersection between code AB and code CD. Then, the following equality is true. AO times OB equals to CO times OD. states that if two codes, code A, B and code C, D are intersecting each other at point O, if two codes are intersecting each other at point O, Point O is the point of intersection between code A, B and code C, D. Then the following equality is true. That A, O times O, B equals to C, O times O, D. A, O times O, B equals to C, O times O, D. Okay. So... We actually can implement rule number four in our circle. Because in our circle, we have code AP that intersects with code db at point o okay i will write it down code ap this code intersects with 
called db we've called db called ab intersects we've called db at point o Again, point O is the point of intersection between code AP and code DB. Therefore, according to rule number four, AO times OP equals to DO times OB. So I will read again the things that I want. Code AP intersects with code DB at point O. Code AP intersects with code DB at point O. Point O is the point of intersection between code AP and code DB. Therefore, according to rule number 4, AO times OB equals to DO times OB. Therefore, AO times OP equals to DO times OB. Okay. So AO equals to 2 over 3 times root 13. And OP equals to OC plus CP. Again, OP equals to OC plus CP. All equals to DO. DO is 10 over 3. Times OB. OB is 20 over 3 units. So in total we got the 2 over 3 times root 13, that is AO times OC plus CP, that is OP, equals to 10 over 3 times 20 over 3. What is the value of OC? The value of OC is 4 over 3 times root 13 units, so I will write it down. So we got that 2 over 3 times root 13 times 4 over 3 times root 13 plus CP equals to 10 over 3 times 20 over 3. Actually, we have uh, 3 in the denominator of this side of the equation and we have 3 in the denominator of the other side of the equation so we can cancel 3 ok so after we cancel the 3 what is left is uh, 2 times root 13 and we have root 13 
Okay, so first of all, I will copy the new e equality after we cancelled free. Ten times twenty is two hundred, so I write it down. So in total we got after we can set three, two times root thirteen times four over three times root thirteen plus CP equals to two hundred over over three. Here we will open the brackets this side of the equation. Actually, 10 times 4 is 8, and root 13 times root 13 is 13. So I'll write it down. So in total we got that 8 times 13 over 3 plus 2 times 13 times CP equals to 200 over 3. In the next uh, 8 times 13 is 104 so I write it down. That 104 over 3 plus 2 times root 13 times CP equals to 200 over 3. In this equality, we will subtract 104 over 3 from both sides of the equation. Subtracted 104 over 3 from both sides of the equation. Here 104 over 3 minus 104 over 3 is 0, so we left only with 2 times root 13 times CP. And here we subtracted from this side of the equation 104 over 3. And we can take a common factor of 3 in the denominator of this side of the equation and we we'll subtract 100 where 200 minus 104 is 96 so in total we we'll get 96 over 3 Got the 2 times root 13 times CP equals to 96 over 3 because 200 minus 104 is 96 and we got the gamma factor of 3 so it is 96 over 3, 96 over 3 is 32 so I write it down. So we got that 
2 times 2 14 times cp equals 2 32. We can divide this equality by 2 and we will get that root 13 times cp equals to 16. Because 32 over 2 is 16. So we got that root 13 times cp equals to 16. We we'll divide this equality by root 13 in order to get the value of CP. So we divided this equality by root 13 and we got that CP equals to 16 over root 13 units. Okay, so we can write here that uh, CP here CP equals to 16 <coughs> over root 13 units. Okay. <coughs> in the next step, we will in the next step we will extend line segment DC until it touches the circle at point Q. Okay, we extend that line segment DC until it touches the circle at point Q. Q is the point of contact between the circle and chord DQ. Okay. And we will use the fourth rule in order to find out the value of CQ. Actually, Code DQ intersects with code AP at point C. Code DQ intersects. We've called AP at point C. C is the point of intersection between called DQ and called AP. Therefore, according to rule number four, AC times CP equals to DC times CQ.
So I'm going to get the things that I want. Chord DQ intersects with chord AP at point C. Okay. Chord DQ intersects with chord AP at point C. C is the point of the intersection between chord DQ and chord AP. Therefore, therefore, according to rule number 4, AC times CP equals to DC times CQ. AC times CP equals to DC times CQ. Okay. So, AC equals to 2 over 3 times root 13 plus 4 over 3 times root 13. In total, it equals to 6 over 3 times root 13. And CP equals to 16 over root 13 units. DC equals to 6 units, while CQ is the missing line segment. I believe it as it is, so in total we got that 6 over 3 times root 13 times 16 over root 13 equals to 6 times CQ. Actually, here we have root 13 in the numerator and we have root 13 in the denominator. So root 13 can be cancelled. And uh, 6 over 3 equals to 2. So in total, we get that 2 times 16. equals to 6 CQ. Okay. We got that 2 times 16 equals to 6 CQ. 2 times 16 is 32, so I write it down. that 32 equals to 6 CQ. We divide this equality by 6 in order to get the value of CQ. So CQ equals to 32 over 6. We got that CQ equals to 32 over 6. We can Divide the numerator and the denominator of this number by 2 and we will get that uh, 16 over 3, so CQ equals to 16 over 3 units. We divided the numerator and the denominator of this number by 2 and we got that CQ equals to 16 over 3 units. Okay, so we can write here that CQ equals to 16 over 3 units. Okay. In the next step, we will extend line segment BC until it touches the circle at point R. Okay. So we extend the line segment BC until it touches the circle at point R. Point R is the point of contact between the circle and code 
dr. Okay, in order to find out the value of rc, the new line segment that we created, we'll use again the fourth rule according to the uh, actually we have line segment RB or chord RB chord RB intersects with chord DQ at point C. Again, C is the point of intersection between chord RB and chord DQ. Therefore, according to rule number 4, C times CQ equals to RC times BC. Okay, DC times CQ equals to RC times BC. So I read the things that I want again. Called RB intersects with chord DQ at point C. Chord RB intersects with chord DQ at point C. Chord, point C is the point of the intersection between chord DQ and chord RB. Therefore, uh, therefore, according to rule number 4, DC times CQ equals to RC times BC. DC times CQ equals to RC times BC. Okay, so DC equals to 6 units and CQ equals to 16 over 3 units. RC is the missing line segment, I will leave it as it is while BC equals to 8 units. So in total we got that 6 times 16 over 3 equals to RC times 8. Here 6 over 3 is 2 so I write it down. So, we got in total that 2 times 16 equals to 8 times RC. 2 times 16 is 32 equals to 8 times RC. Okay? We got that 32 equals to 8 times RC. 32, we divide this equality by 8 in order to get the value of RC. 32 over 8 is 4, so I write it down. We got that the value of RC is 4 units. So I write it here that the value of RC is 4 units. Okay, so actually 
we got all the values of all the line segments inside the circle and the only missing thing is that uh, we have to find out is the radius of this circle okay and uh, in order to find out the value of the radius of this circle we will use new rule rule number five According to rule number five, uh, if two chords are intersecting each other at 90 degrees, that is to say chord A, B, chord A, B, intersects with chord CD okay chord AB Chord AB intersects with chord CD at 90 degrees. This angle is 90 degrees. So we have those two chords create 90 degrees at the point of intersection. Okay, actually, all the angles see, uh, if around this point is 90 degrees. So chord AB intersects with chord CD at 90 degrees at point O. The point of intersection is defined as point O. So if this is the reality, then the following equality is true. That four times the radius of this circle squared equals to AO squared plus BO squared AO squared plus BO squared plus CO squared plus d o square okay so if two chords are intersecting each other at 90 degrees that is to say they create 90 degrees at the point of intersection then the following equality is true that 4 times the radius of the circle squared equals to a o square plus v o square plus c o square plus d o square okay so I will write down all number five. So, according to rule number five, if two chords are intersecting each other at 90 degrees, Point O, point O is the point of intersection between chord A, B and chord C, D. Then the following equality is true.
that four times the radius of the circle squared equals to a o square plus b o square plus c o square plus d o square. So I read rule number five again. Rule number five states that if two chords, that is to say chord AB and chord CD are intersecting each other at 90 degrees, they create 90 degrees at the point of intersection and the point of intersection is point O, then the following equality is true, that 4 times the radius of this circle squared equals to A O squared plus V O squared plus C O squared plus D O squared. Okay, so actually we can implement rule number 5 in our circle Because in our circle we have chord DQ intersects with chord RB. at 90 degrees. Why? Because of the fact that angle BCD equals to 90 degrees according to what is given us in the question. Angle BCD equals to 90 degrees. And the point of intersection is point C. So, according to rule number 5, therefore, according to rule number 5, according to rule number 5, 4 times the radius of this circle squared, equals to RC square plus BC square plus DC square plus CQ square. So I read again the things that I wrote. Chord DQ intersects with chord RB at 90 degrees because of the fact that angle BCD equals to 90 degrees, angle BCD equals to 90 degrees. Therefore, chord DQ intersects with chord RB at 90 degrees. Actually, all the angles between uh, around point C, all the four angles are right angles, they are equal to 90 degrees. Therefore, according to rule number 5, 4 times the radius of the circle squared equals to RC square plus BC square plus DC square plus CQ square. Four. So 4 times the radius of this circle squared equals to RC square plus BC square plus DC square plus CQ square. Okay, so four times the radius of the circle squared 
equals to RC, RC square RC equals to 4 units, so 4 square is 16 plus BC square BC equals to 8, so 8 square is 64 plus DC square DC equals to 6, so 6 square is 36 plus CQ square CQ equals to 16 over 3 16 over 3 is 5 third and 5 third squared is 28.444 So, in total regard that 4 times the radius of the circle squared equals to 16 plus 36 plus uh, 64 plus 36 plus 28.444 4. 64 plus 36 is 100 100 plus 16 is 116 116 plus 28.444 4, 4 is 144.444 4, 4. so I write it down So we got that 4 times the radius of the circle squared equals to 144.444. We will divide this equality by 4 in order to get the value of R squared. R squared equals to 36.111. So we got that R squared equals to 36.111. But we know that uh, the area of any circle, the area of any circle equals to pi times the radius of the circle squared. Okay, the area of any circle equals to pi times the radius of the circle squared. And we know that R squared equals to 36.111, so we can substitute R squared by 36.111 in this formula, and we will get that the area of our circle equals to pi times 36.111 square units. Okay. Okay. The area of our circle equals to five times thirty six point one 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 square units. Okay, or in terms of numbers, the area of the circle, of our circle equals to 113.45 square units. Okay, the area of our circle equals to 113.45 square units. Okay, so the area of this circle equals to 113.45 square units. Okay, now I will summarize the lecture. Actually, I wanted to find out the area of this circle. And uh, inside the circle we have a shape. And uh, uh, we know that this angle is a right angle, and angle ADC is a right angle, and also angle BCD is a right angle. And uh, we know that side AD of this shape equals to 4 units, side DC equals to 6 units, 
inside VC of this shape equals to 8 units. Okay, and we want to find out the value, the radius, uh, the area of this circle. Okay. Uh, first of all, we have to define the term of uh, one-sided angles in order to find out the area of this circle we must uh, define the term of uh, one-sided angles what are uh, one-sided angles okay actually one-sided angles are angles that are located on the same sides of uh, line uh, C if we have lines A and B and line C that intersects those two lines A and B actually uh, uh, angles Uh, alpha and beta are located at uh, the same sides of line C and therefore they are defined as one-sided angles ok Okay, uh, actually, if we have two lines, line A and line B, and line C that intersects those two lines, actually, angles alpha and beta are defined as interior one-sided angles they are interior angles because they are located at the same side of line C they are both located on the right side of line C for that reason they are defined as one-sided angles and they are interior angles because they are inside the structure of lines of uh, A, C and B inside this structure of lines A, C and B for that reason they are defined as interior angles so those angles are defined as interior one-sided angles and we have the second type of one-sided angles that is to say one-sided exterior angles and again they are uh, one-sided angles because both of those angles alpha and beta are located in the right side of line C alpha and beta are located in the right side of the red line, line C for that reason they are defined the one sided angles and they are outside of the structure of lines A, C and B for that reason they are defined as exterior angles and actually we have or number one for one-sided angles it states that if the sum of the two one-sided angles equals to 180 degrees and they can be interior angles so external angles it applies to both of the two types of angles so if the sum of those two angles alpha and beta equals to 180 degrees so of the, or if the sum of 
the two one-sided angles is equal to 180 degrees, then line A is parallel to line B. So here, if alpha plus beta equals to 180 degrees, and they are actually external one-sided angles, so we have the sum of the two one-sided external angles that equals to 180 degrees, then line A is parallel to line B. Okay, and the, the same rule is true for interior one-sided angles. If the, according to rule number one, if the sum of those two internal one-sided angles equals to 180 degrees, then according to rule number one, line A is parallel to line B. Okay, so we actually can implement rule number one in our circle because in our circle we have uh, two one-sided angles. This angle and this angle, those two angles are defined as one-sided angles. Why? Because they are located on the same side prime segment DC, they are actually located on the left side of line segment DC, so they are one-sided angles and they are interior angles because they are located inside of this structure of lines, so according to rule number one, we know that the sum of those two one-sided internal angles equals to 180 degrees because 90 degrees plus 90 degrees is 180 degrees and therefore according to rule number one line segment AD is parallel to line segment DC okay AD is parallel to DC according to rule number one so We know that those two line segments are parallel to each other. Then we defined the term of vertex angles. Actually, whenever two lines are intersecting each other, at the point of intersection, they create four angles. Angle 1, angle 2, angle 3, and angle 4. And actually angles 1 and 3 are defined as vertex angles and also angles 2 and 4 are also defined as vertex angles. And uh, we have a rule, rule number 2, that states that vertex angles are equal to each other. So actually here angles 1 and 3 that are defined as vertex angles they are equal to each other that is to say angle 1 equals to angle 3 and also angles 2 and 4 that are defined as vertex angles they are equal to each other that is to say angle 2 equals to angle 4 and actually uh, here you can see that two pairs of vertex angles are created angles 1 and 3 is, is the first pair of vertex angles and angles 2 and 4 are the second pair of vertex angles that are created they, and they both equal to each other so whenever two lines are intersecting each other they create two pairs of vertex angles this is the first pair of vertex angles, alpha and beta, that are equal to each other according to rule number 2. And this is the second pair of vertex angles that are also equal to each other according to rule number 2. Okay, so actually we implemented this rule, uh, rule number two, the, the rule, uh, rule number two in our circle because we 
this angle and this angle, those two angles are vertex angles, and according to rule number two, they are equal to each other. Angle A O D equals to this angle equals to angle B O C. So this angle, those two angles are defined as vertex angles, and according to rule number two, they are equal to each other. Then we defined the term of alternating angles. If we have two lines, line A and line B, and line C that intersects those two lines, and actually angles alpha and beta are defined as external alternating angles, and they are alternating angles because they are located at different sides of line C. Here while while angle alpha is located in the right side of line C, angle beta is located at the, the, at the left side of line C. For that reason, they are defined as alternating angles, and they are external angles because of the fact that they are located outside of this structure of angles A, C, and B. Okay, so those two angles are defined as exterior alternating angles. And we also have the second type of alternating angles. Those angles are defined as interior alternating angles. And again, they are alternating angles because they are located at different sides of line C, while angle alpha is located on the right side of line C, and the beta is located on the left side of line C. For that reason, they are defined as alternating angles, and they are interior angles because they are located inside the structure of lines A, C, and B. Okay, they are located inside the structure of lines A, C, and B. For that reason, they are located, they are defined as interior angles. So those two angles are defined as interior alternating angles and we have all number four that states that alternating angles and it doesn't matter if they are internal angles or external angles alternating angles between parallel lines are equal to each other so actually those two Alternate, we have those two alternating angles, and if we know that line A is parallel to line B, then those two alternating angles are equal to each other. That is to say, angle alpha equals to angle beta. Okay? And it also applies to, the whole number three also applies to exterior alternating angles. If we know that line A is parallel to line B, then those two exterior alternating angles are equal to each other, alpha equals to beta. Okay? So we actually can implement also rule number three in our circle because here we have those two angles are alternating angles because they are located at different sides of line segment AC for, and they are also located, those two alternating angles are located between parallel line segments because AD is parallel to PC according to rule number one so those two alternating angles are located between parallel line segments therefore according to rule number three they are equal to each other and also we have those two uh, those two angles that are also defined as alternating angles because they are located at different sides of line segment DB. Okay? For that reason, they are alternating angles and they are also located between parallel lines. Line segment AD is parallel to line segment BC. So those two alternating angles are located between parallel line segments. Therefore, according to rule number three, they are equal to each other. So actually, in 
those two green triangles, we proved uh, this angle is equal to this angle because they are vertex angles and according to one number two they are equal to each other. We have already proved that those two angles are equal to each other because of the whole number three that states that the Latin angles are equal to each other and we also proved that those two angles are equal to each other because they are also alternating angles and according to all number three alternating angles between parallel lines are equal to each other so we actually proved that three angles of this green triangle are equal to three angles of this green triangle therefore we, we proved that those two green triangles are similar to each other according to the rule of, the, of angle 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 okay According to the rule of angle, 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 we prove that uh, those two green triangles are similar to each other because we prove that three angles of this green triangles are equal to three angles of this green triangles. So those two green triangles are similar triangles. And whenever we have two similar triangles, the following equality is true for their sides. If, do, those two green, uh, if those two triangles are similar to each other, then AB over DE equals to AC over DF equals to BC over EF. Okay? So, in our circle, we have the two green triangles and the following equality is true for their sides. OB over OD equals to OC over OA equals to BC over AD. According to the rule of the similar triangles that have spatial relationship between their sides okay OB over OD equals to OC over OA equals to BC over AD but we know that BC equals to 8 units and AD equals to 4 units so BC equals to 8 units and AD equals to 4 units so 8 over 4 is 2 and we have to uh, equalities from this big equality we can say that OB over OD equals to 2 okay if OB over OD equals to 2 then OB equals to 2 times OD OB equals 2 times OD so if OD equals to A then OB equals 2 times OD OD equals 2 times A Okay, and we have the second equality that OC over OA equals to 2. If OC over OA equals to 2, then OC equals 2 times OA. OC equals 2 times OA. So if OA equals to B, then OC equals 2 times B, because OC equals 2 times OA. So OC equals 2 times B. Okay, and uh, in order to find out the values of A and B, we implemented the Pythagorean theorem uh, actually on this right triangle. Angle ADC equals to 90 degrees, therefore triangle ADC is a right triangle and uh, according we can implement the Pythagorean theorem that states that the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. That is to say, the square of the hypotenuse is AC square equals to AD square plus DC square. Okay? AC square in the right angle ADC. AC square equals to AD square plus DC square. In, we know that AC equals to 3B. Okay? And uh, uh, we know the value of AD and DC, so the only missing variable is V. 
we put all the data inside this equation and we found out that b equals to 2 over 3 times root 13 by 2 times b equals to 4 over 3 times root 13. And also we know that angle BCD is a right angle. For that reason, triangle BCD is a right triangle. And then we can increment again the Pythagorean theorem that states that the square of the hypotenuse, that is to say DB square, equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars, equals to CD square plus DC square. Okay? And the right triangle BCD, DB square equals to BC square plus DC square. Okay? DB equals to A plus 2A equals to 3A. And we know that DC equals to 6 units and BC equals to 8 units. So the only missing variable is A. We put all the data inside this equation and we found out that A equals to 2 over 3 units, while 2A equals to 20 over 3 units. Okay? We found out the value of A and 2A. And uh, actually have all the values of all the line segments inside the circle. And uh, in the next step, we extend that line segment AC until it touches the circle at point P. And in order to find out the value of CP, we implemented rule number 4 in this circle. According to rule number 4, if two chords, that is to say chord AB and chord AD are intersecting each other at point O, then the following equality is true. That AO times BO equals to CO times DO. Okay, whenever two chords are intersecting each other, we can implement this rule. Okay, that AO times BO equals to CO times DO. Okay. According to rule number 4, if two chords are intersecting each other at point O, then the following equality is true that AO times OB equals to CO times OD. So we actually implemented rule number 4 in our circle because we have code AP that intersects with code DB at point O. So according to rule number 4, AO times OP equals to DO times OB. Okay? AO times OP equals to DO times BO times OB. And uh, the only missing variable is CP. We put the data inside this equality and we found out that uh, the value of CP is 16 over root 13 units. Okay, and then we extended line segment DC until it touches the circle at point Q. And in order to find out the value of line segment CQ, we implemented rule number 4. Okay, we actually have code DQ. This code DQ that intersects with code AP at point C. Point C is the point of intersection between code DQ and code AP. Therefore, according to rule number 4, AC times CP equals to DC times CQ. Okay? AC times CP equals to DC times CQ. And the only missing line segment is CQ. We know all the values of all the line segments here. We put the data inside this equation and we found out that CQ equals to 16 over 3 units, okay? And then we extended line segment BC until it touches the circle at point O. 
and in order to find out the value of line segment RC, we implemented rule number 4 again. We have port RB that intersects with port DQ at point C. Therefore, according to rule number 4, DC times CQ equals to RC times BC. Okay, according to rule number 4, DC times CQ equals to RC times BC. The only missing variable is RC. We know all the values of all the line segments here. So, we put the data inside this equality and we found out that the, the value of RC is 4 units. RC equals to 4 units. So, we know all the values of all the line segments inside this circle and the only missing thing is the radius of this circle and, and in order to find out the value of of the radius of this circle, we implemented rule number 5. According to rule number 5, if two ports are intersecting each other at 90 degrees, we have port AB that intersects with port CD at 90 degrees, they create 90 degrees at the point of intersection, that is to say at point O. If this is the reality, then the following equality is true, that Four times the radius of this circle, this circle squared, equals to a o square plus b o square plus c o square plus d o square. Okay. So, rule number five states that if two poles are intersecting each other at 90 degrees, port a b intersects with port c d at 90 degrees at point o. The point of intersection is point o. Then four times the radius of this circle squared equals to a O square plus B O square plus C O square plus D O square. Okay, so we can implement rule number five in our circle because in our circle we have code D Q. Code D Q intersects with code R B at point C. Point C is the point of intersection. And actually, angle BCD is a right angle, it's equals to 90 degrees, so code RB creates with code DQ 90 degrees. For, so according to, we can implement rule number 5, so according to rule number 5, 4 times the radius of this circle squared equals to RC squared plus BC squared plus DC squared plus CQ squared. Okay, four times the radius of the circle squared equals to RC squared plus BC squared plus DC squared plus CQ squared. So we put, we know all the values of all the line segments here, we put the data inside this equality and we found out that the, the radius squared the radius of this circle squared equals to 36.111. But we know that the, area, the formula for the R of any circle is pi times the radius of the circle squared. So we can substitute the value of R squared by 36.111. So we got that the area of our circle is pi times 36.111 square units. So the area of our circle is 113.45 square units. Okay, so the area of this circle is 113.45 square units. Okay, thank you very much.